Hello everyone, it's Anani Nutritionist. My name is Dr. Christina Tarantola. I am a licensed pharmacist, health coach, and Reiki energy healer. And today I want to talk to you about, you know, are you supposed to be using your mind or your heart when making a decision? So I was really inspired by the soul cycle class that I took this morning in Williamsburg, and I left feeling like I had just taken a drug, like literally might have been ecstasy in that room because I literally felt such a heart opening, such a sense of joy after taking that class. And I just want to express <laughs> my joy through this video. So why not, um, you know, share something that I've been wanting to talk about for a while. And it has to do with really going back to the question, should I be using my head or my heart? Um, it's really about trusting your intuition and trusting yourself. And so what happens to a lot of us is as we grow up and as we are molded and shaped by our parents, society, our teachers, we tend to stifle down our creativity. We hide who we are because maybe we were ridiculed by someone in school. And it really leads us down this path where we're limited. We're a limited uh, version of who we really are. And this can lead us to suffer, of course, because when you're not expressing who you really are in the world and you aren't, you know, revealing who you are, then people like you for someone that you aren't. And it's very frustrating to be showing this aspect of yourself or a certain facade, and we, we all do this to an extent. We all, you know, wear different masks of whether it's, you know, we crave significance or love or attention, whatever that is. And it's really all about unveiling these limiting aspects of ourselves, un unleashing them slowly, layer by layer, to reveal our authentic self. And I was just talking to one of my clients about this last week about how, you know, if you're not portraying your true self to the world you can't attract your people. And by your people, I mean, you know, your vibe attracts your tribe. So when you're being your real self, when you're putting your voice out there, using your creativity from an authentic place and expressing it through your heart, then you will start to attract the people that are in alignment on that same vibra vibrational frequency as you. And there's no better feeling than that. So there's two opposing sides of who we are you know there's there's the part that you know is so dying to be expressed our soul that's our our heart our soul and that's what i'm talking about when i'm saying coming from the the mind or the heart so coming from the soul is really coming from your heart space and creating and generating things from an authentic space and so you might be asking yourself well how do i know what my authentic self is. How do I how do I know if I'm putting on a mask or portraying something that I'm not? And it's really if you think about it, it's the things that you try to hide about yourself or that you deny about yourself um, are the the parts that we try to not show the rest of the world. And in reality, we are perfect, whole, and complete as we are. And so all of these different aspects of ourself, the ego self, the soul self that's dying to be expressed, are all part of who you are. And it's all beautiful. The thing to realize is that if you're going through this spiritual path, if you're going through maybe a dark night of the soul where you feel depressed and you just want to be alone and you're kind of in the middle of, you know, going along the spiritual path to ascension, but you're still um, releasing these old ways of being, that can be a very challenging time because you're trying to release the past and work with some of those limiting beliefs that you were taught while also trying to ascend. So what happens is our, our physical body will often feel the symptoms of that. So we might have fatigue or anxiety or you might gain weight because in order to transmute this energy a lot of extra 
a lot of extra energy is needed. So oftentimes we will gain weight or have weight fluctuations because your body is being literally transformed from the inside out energetically. So if you are going through that, know that it's it's completely normal and know that there is always support out there. I am here to support you if you need any type of assistance with that. I mean, during that period of your life, we are going through these shedding of limiting beliefs. It's important to have the support system and tools, things like essential oils or Reiki, meditation. Meditation literally changed my life. And I say this to so many people that I talk to. And the reason why so many people avoid meditation is because it actually, you know, reflects back to you. You're sitting by yourself and you're, you have to almost look at yourself. It's like a mirror. And we're so afraid of those different parts of us. But in reality, when we can actually look at it and have compassion for those aspects of ourself, then we can release it and we can accept it and integrate those aspects as well because there's no light without dark there's no yin without yang masculine feminine everything has polarity so when you start to heal whether it's you know spiritually mental emotionally physically these aspects will come up to be released so this might be in the form of an argument or you keep attracting the same type of person in your life or maybe you have the same type of boss that you know you keep recreating you keep moving from job to job but you still have the same dynamic amongst the people that you work with so what I'm trying to say is that you know your soul is trying to show you the way to heal and so that's what I'm going almost doing a little <laughs> loop around a circle to come back to the theme of you know really trusting your intuition and tapping into your higher self or your soul self so the way to access that part of yourself is to meditate and to bring in more divine light because what happens when you meditate is I have, you know, so many things that I, I've written down I wanted to mention in this video. It, it brings more divine energy into your body to have your mind be still, to bring your, your breath back to the present moment. And it's interesting because when you really get past that point where you want to stop doing something, you know, it's like my soul cycle class today. I was exhausted. I felt so out of shape. But when you push just past that comfort zone of this is really uncomfortable. I don't want to be doing this right now. The other side of that comfort zone is a huge amount of freedom. And so when you start to meditate and you practice that self-discipline on the other side of that is exactly what you're seeking it's it, it's your inner voice it's your intuition it's your higher self and it's such a beautiful thing when you begin to reveal who you really are and you begin to shed these beliefs that don't serve you anymore meditation also is the fastest way to raise your vibration so even if you're doing it five ten minutes a day meditation can enhance your energy it, you know we're energetic beings I talk about this all the time and you know whether it's using essential oils meditating raising your vibration through food um, stopping the judgment or the the inner critic there are so many different ways to raise your vibration and to call into your life the very things that you desire but what I'm saying is that the things that you want have to come from a place from your heart and so oftentimes going back to what I was saying before is you know should we be using our heart or our mind to make decisions and so really it's a balance but what I would say is that you have to use your intuition your heart the divine speaks to us through our heart and so when you begin to listen to that aspect of yourself in the solitude of meditation in the quietness of your own space, your own energy, you know, you can experience such a level of joy and radiance and you begin to release those patterns that don't serve you anymore. So 
honestly, meditation is the way to start to really listen to your gut. And I'll give you a quick story about myself is, you know, I was going down a road where I could either go work at my father's pharmacy or I could go off and do a residency and I kept getting this message day in day out bad gut feeling right here in my solar plexus to leave and to do something bigger with with my life and I felt that calling deep in me and you might have that too where you almost feel like your soul is dying and it, it will continue to die unless you make a shift unless you make a a new decision a new choice and so I know exactly how you feel if, if you are a person that feels stuck in your life or torn between, you know, which way to go or should I leave this relationship or, you know, do I have to change? I mean, all these questions can go on in your mind, but your soul always knows. And so it took a lot of strength and courage to go off on my own and forge this new path, but I wouldn't regret it because it, at the edge of that comfort zone, like I said before, is where I found my freedom. And it was where I healed my eating disorder. It was where I started my own health coaching business. I started my YouTube channel, which is, you know, how I have, I'm so fortunate to have you watching now. I published a book and it all really started with that decision, that one decision to follow my intuition, to follow that inner guidance. And that's what my next book is going to be about is, you know, how can you work with your own energy and understand, you know, what is your soul mission here? What is your purpose? What drives you? What is it that you can bring to this world? Because we are all born with a divine mission, a divine purpose. And a, a gift or several gifts to share with this world and whatever that is that resonates in your heart whatever calls to your attention is usually the way to your your uh, destiny to your mission in the world and it's such a beautiful thing when you can connect to that and when you can wake up every day knowing that this is what I'm meant to be doing here because, you know, for example, me, I suffered for a long time with an eating disorder, with constant anxiety. I was diagnosed with depression at 18 and I suffered a lot because I wasn't following that inner GPS. I was not following my gut, my heart. So I had a, an interesting interaction with a coworker and she was saying to me, oh, every time I've followed my heart, I've, you know, been... I've gone down the wrong path and I think that what people resonate with as coming from their heart is is emotion. So oftentimes, right, we, we can get caught up in emotion. It's like, oh my god, I love this person. I need them. I want them. That is coming from the ego space. Even though it's from the heart, you feel like it's from the heart, you have to have your authentic drive to follow your heart. So even a step before saying, should I follow my heart or my head? We have to go always, always go down to the motive or the intention. So what is my intention by desiring this person, by starting my own business, by writing a book, by asking this person on a date? What's your true intention? That's even a step before you ask yourself, okay, now what do I do here? So, you know, it's really about cultivating your your own inner peace, your own self-love, trusting yourself, knowing yourself, knowing that no matter what happens, you will be okay. And no matter who comes in and out of your life, you understand that we are all just teaching each other lessons. Specific people come into your life and cause cause you to have challenges in order to reveal more of those layers of who you really are because that's the divine intention is that we follow we each follow our own distinct path and so these challenges that you're experiencing or the people that are coming into your life are there for a reason and if you can start to see them as a gift instead of as a barrier or a block then you start to heal yourself you start to 
understand the integration process of molding the lead into gold because that's what you are. You are an energetic being that's meant to shine, that is meant to illuminate and to inspire people, to, you know, help people in your community. And for, it doesn't have to be something so grandiose. It can be, you know, just you being loving and being who you are inspires other people. Doesn't necessarily mean that you have to force people to do things that you want them to do. By being the example, by, you know, as Gandhi said, be the change you wish to see in the world, then you embody those qualities, integrity, courage, um, you know, you're your authentic self, you're showing that to the world, there's nothing more beautiful than that. And when you can radiate that happiness, that's when you start to attract the right people in your life. That's when you start to emanate this radiance, this illumination that will bring everything that you desire into your life. It will literally magnetize your desires into your life. So again, just going going back, because I know I went through a lot, you know, following your intuition, following your heart is the most important thing to do because the ego or the mind can play tricks on you. It can say, oh, you're not worthy, you're not good enough. We have these limiting beliefs that need to be shed, need to be released in order to integrate that soul part of us that always knows, the higher self that always knows the right and wrong choice. And if you sit with yourself in meditation, you can start to hear that voice. You can start to understand what these feelings are and why you're called to do something or make a make a call to someone or you know I don't know write an email to someone take action it's not only about you know understanding your own energy and revealing it it's about co-creating and taking the action so listening to your intuition your higher self angels guides whatever you want to call it is the gateway is the way the conduit that you will be shown and revealed you know your life path and like I said, through meditation, through solitude, um, through re releasing these beliefs about who you are and really taking the time to take care of yourself and, you know, meditate or again, use essential oils or get an energy healing to get Reiki done. These techniques will help you raise your vibration. They will help you attract the things that you want and you won't have to struggle for it. It'll just come to you in the most beautiful, synchronistic way. And so that's what I wanted to impart on you today is that, you know, whatever you're going through right now, you know, whether you're um, a mother, whether you're a student or someone that has an illness or someone that is looking and searching for that divine purpose that, you know, you're meant to bring into this world, we all have things that we worry about, things that we, you know, are always thinking about. But really, it's about coming from that heart space, that authentic part of who you are, embodying that, being surrounded by that, that own, your own self-love, radiating it out. And that's how we begin to make change in the world. That's how we begin to shift all of this craziness that's been going on in the world, the, you know, wars and, you know, even within our own microcosm, our, whether it's our work environment, our home environment, when you start to un unveil who you are, there's nothing more beautiful than that because you literally impact the rest of us. You, you impact the world and you can heal the world. So thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you guys soon. Let me know what you thought. Don't forget to give me a like if you liked the video, which I hope you did, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. See you guys later.